Hi, I'm Matt from Tubby Tarot, and today I'd like to take you through all my oracle cards. Let's go! Right, what we're going to do is we're going to start with my two little nature decks. The first one I want to show you is actually out of print. It's called the Tree Angel Oracle. Um, you can still get it, but this particular version is out of print. This is what the actual cards look like. Big white borders, but because it's an OOP deck, I don't want to trim it. It reduces the value. This is, I found out quite um, to my horror when I trimmed my Karma Tarot. That's what the back of the cards look like. They are quite big cards. You see, I've got big hands and they fit right into my hands. Gorgeous, gorgeous deck, Tree Angel Oracle. Quite a nice big set. The next one I want to show you, also my nature ones, is called Nature's Whispers Oracle. Now, this is a beautiful set of cards. Again, huge amount of detail in these cards. Um, massive amount of detail. These cards are absolutely incredible. They're the kind of cards you could choose one card a day and you could just spend like half an hour just staring at the card and finding stuff. That's the back of the cards. Gorgeous. So that is your Nature's Whispers Oracle. And those are the two nature decks that I have. The ne next decks I want to show you are slightly sort of historical fantasy kind of stuff. I only have three of them. The first one I want to show you is a strange little deck. It's called the Imperial Dragon Oracle, but it can also be used as a majors only arcana um, tarot deck. I'm not a huge fan. This is the only dragon deck that I have. I'm not a huge dragon fan, but I really like this. I really like the artwork. It kind of works for me. Look at that. It really pops. You know, I really like these. And as I say, it comes in a little tiny box like that. Um, it's only 22 cards. That's the back. All right. Um, and you can use it as an oracle or as a, um, a sort of Rider White uh, clone um, tarot deck. All right. The next lot I want to show you are my beautiful Greek mythology reading cards. Now, it doesn't say it's an oracle, but it actually is. I've trimmed mine in copper. And this is what they look like. They're gorgeous. There's like Perseus and Persephone, and you've got the Horai, um, and you've got Prometheus. Love Prometheus. And you've got Eros. And this is what these cards are, okay? They're all the kind of Greek mythology characters. That's the back of the cards. Beautiful backs. Look at that. How gorgeous. And strangely enough, these cards read really, really well. Um, they are quite cheap on Amazon as well, and they really are worth getting. That is the Greek mythology reading cards. Really cool deck. And finally, for this section, I have the pocket version of the Isis Oracle. This does come in a large version, but the pocket version is really cool, and I'll show you why. Okay, so this is the size of the cards. They're, they're quite small. Um, let me show you Let me show you what they look like first. They're, they're gorgeous. They're, they're very sort of in-your-face Egyptian. Obviously, all Egyptian. Love that. They don't have anything but the picture on the front. Um, but if you turn them around, oh, I did mine in orange, by the way. If you turn them over, you've got the blurb on the back. It tells you what the card is and what, it, what, the, what the oracle says. Very, very, very nice little deck. Right, now we're going to look at some of my fantasy decks. And I have... Two Colette Baron Reed decks, and I'm sure everybody has this Wisdom of the Oracle. There's a divination card. So what I've done with mine is I've edged them in blue, a light blue, and I've actually trimmed them. So I've trimmed all the borders off. And they actually look really nice. Look there. It's a, it's a very fantasy deck. Um, beautifully collaged. It's digital collage. But Colette Baron Reed tends to have the most amazing collage work on her cards. It just, it, it just really, really works. Um, and those, that's what the backs look like. So even if you trim this, it still works absolutely perfectly. And I do prefer the cards without borders. They just work really nicely. So that's the Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron Reed. Now the other Colette Baron Reed box of Oracle cards I have is the Enchanted Map. Another old one. Um, I've edged mine in like a very, very light uh, pearlescent beige. And I've got, again, it's a really pretty deck. It's a very, very... Um, woodsy, elvish deck. Very fantasy. Gorgeous, gorgeous deck. And this is what the back of the deck looks like. And I didn't want to take those borders off because they actually work. They work really nicely with the, with the cards. So I didn't take those borders off. 
That is the Enchanted Map Oracle by Colette Baron Reed. Next up, I've got the Energy Oracle. I don't know if anybody else has got this one. I, I, I picked it up for next to nothing at one of the shops here in Durban. Um, and of course, I've edged it. <laughs> I love edging my cards. Um, that's what the backs look like. Really, really nice back, actually. Look at that. It's like really intricate. I love that. And then this is a very sexy deck. Um, it's, it's very kind of homoerotic in a way because it's got lots of guys in it. Lots of shirtless guys, weird shit like that. Um, beautiful. The women are gorgeous. The men are gorgeous. Um, that just freaks me out because it looks like a real heart. But it's a really, really cool deck. Can you see there? Look, it's got lots of really cool pictures. Um, it's, it's really nice. Um, and it reads really nicely. I use this quite a lot when I've done a tarot reading and I want to just pull a card at the end of the reading. So, because um, it's, got, it's got a very diverse energy. It's kind of masculine and feminine. So that is the energy oracle. Okay. The next one I want to talk to you about, and this is one of my pride and joys. This is the Oracle of Mystical Moments, and it is just exquisite. What I've done with this one is I've edged it in the lightest of blue and the lightest of pink. So when, the, when it... Look there. How gorge. That's the back. Very intricate. Very beautiful. I don't use these cards as Oracle cards. I simply use them because of the pictures. Incredible pictures. These are just... I, I can just go through, when I'm feeling down, I can take this deck of cards and just quietly go through it and just look at the photo, the, the, the photographs, the, the pictures on these cards. They are utterly magnificent. Um, a definite, a definitely worth getting. It is quite expensive, but it's definitely worth getting. It's called the Oracle of Mystical Moments. Okay. And those are my fantasy oracle decks. Okay, next I'm going to show you what I term my spiritual oracle cards. I don't like to call these angel cards because not all of them are angel cards, but they are my spiritual decks. This is the Whispers of Lord Ganesha. It's a really, really big deck of cards, but it is just the cutest, cutest deck. I've edged mine in a dark green and light green and then a, a, a sort of lime acid green, and they are just the cutest thing. Look here, it's all about Ganesha, and they're really cute because they've got like the little word and then they've got all these like really cool pictures of Ganesha. Okay. Ganesha is a Hindu deity for those people who don't know who he is. <laughs> okay, he is, what the, he is the elephant god, the elephant-headed god. And these are just really nice cards to pull out. You've got all the, all the chakra colors and you've got like, it's basically like all the different stages of his of his journey, of his life. So you've got him as a little tiny baby elephant. There he is. And then he grows up. And that's the back of the cards. Uh, just a really nice um, pull a card a day kind of, kind of deck. It's what I would use this for. I've never done actual reading. So that I just use it as a pull a card a day. Okay, so that's the Whispers of Lord Ganesha. Then I have my one and only Doreen Virtue deck. I don't like Doreen Virtue, I never have, even before all the controversy with her, I was never into her decks. But this deck I picked up for about 20 rand, South African, and um, it's one of her very old decks. It's called Healing with the Angels Oracle. And I like it because it's so incredibly different. I love the weird borders. And all the cards have got like a different type of, of um, drawing style on them. Some are incredibly cartoonish, and others are sort of like that, and then yet others are this, this sort of Victorian Baroque kind of stuff, like that. So I really, really like this, and they are uh, actually quite nice cards to read with. Um, that is what the back looks like. Okay, it's the same as what's on the box, I think, is it? No, it's not. That's what the back looks like. <laughs> All right, um, and it's a pretty little box. It's not they 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 sort of really oracle sized cards. Definitely a, a deck if you are if you are into Doreen Virtue. I'm sure you'll have this, but if you're not into Doreen Virtue, I can recommend this as one of probably her best deck to get. Okay, but that's just my opinion. All right, so that's the Healing with the Angels oracle. 
What do we have next? Okay, let's stick to the angel, a proper angel deck, which uh, this, is a very, this is a weird one. This used to be by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine, but when Doreen went all happy clappy on us, Radley Valentine reissued this under his own name. And this is actually, it says it's a tarot deck, but it's not really. I'd find this very, very difficult to read as a tarot, uh, tarot deck. First of all, the cards are enormous. Secondly, the gilding makes it really difficult to shuffle. Okay, it's that sticky gilding, but it's gorgeous. Um... And it is like an absolute tome. This thing is monstrous. It is the heavy, heavy, heavy deck. It's a monstrous deck. This is the back of the deck. Okay. So very pretty. And it's got this... Oh, I have been using it, so some of the cards are upside down. It's just one of those decks that you have to buy, and you've got to just really read the book and, and go into like how to use these, these cards. Because you cannot use them as a tarot. If you use these as a tarot, you've got to be like a freaking dynamite tarot reader. Seriously, I use these as an oracle deck and they actually work. Again, it's more of a pick a card a day deck. But anyway, that's the Guardian Angel Tarot Cards. Guardian Angel Cards uh, by Radley Valentine. All right. And then my last two spiritual decks that I have are both by Kyle Gray. The first one I was gifted, uh, Keepers of the Light, one of his early decks. Beautiful, beautiful deck. Um, it was one of the first decks that I tried to edge. I've tried to edge this with a gold pen. The worst thing you could ever do. It's smudged everywhere and it just looks so shite. But anyway, Kyle Gray, Keepers of the Light Oracle. Okay. Um, nice size. It comes with all kinds of stuff. It's got the Holy Spirit. It's got Odin. It's got Mother Mary. It's got Horus. You name it. It's in here. White Eagle. So you've got everything. The Shikana or Shakina, should I say. Um, Another Archangel, a, a Commander Ashtar. Some of these people, I mean, there's some of these people, I don't even know who they are. But it's a lovely, the artwork by Lily Moses is absolutely gorgeous. That's the back of the cards. Again, beautiful. It's almost got a, a gold, like a, like a, um, what do you call it? Like a brushed gold um, backing. Okay, so Keepers of the Light. And next, oh my goodness gracious, I'm bumping everything around here. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> The, and the next one and the last one in my religious or spiritual or angel collection is the other Carl, uh, Carl Gray, Angels and Ancestors. And this one I really, really like. I've edged mine in brown, uh, different colors of different kinds of brown. So I wanted it to look like wood. That's the back of the cards. Now, it looks blue here, but it's actually green. This is, the, this is what the cards look like. Again, Lily Moses did the artwork. And these are just really, really nice. These are kind of, there aren't that many angels in here, um, it's more kind of, I don't even know what to say, this is this has just got so many different types of thing in it, um, that it's really, really cool, it's a lovely deck, it really is, it's one of those decks that if you want to get a Kyle Gray deck, um, this is the deck to get, don't go for his angel deck, it's a bit naff, um, this is definitely the deck, if you want one Kyle Gray, this is the deck to get. Okay, so that is the Angels and Ancestors Oracle. That is the end of my spiritual Oracle decks. Right, now for the last lap, I'm going to show you what I call my Dark Oracle. Some might disagree, but to me, these are my darker Oracle decks. And I'm going to start with one that is actually dark, but very, very cute. And it's called the Oracle of Shadow and Light. Um, this lady has done another deck like this. I think she's actually done a tarot deck. I'm not too sure, but Lucy Cavendish. Awesome, awesome, awesome deck. Um, it's just, it's very cartoony. It's very much the girl with the big eyes. But it's, it's pretty creepy as well. It's got some really, I mean, I know that's probably meant to be Carly. Oh, she says I'm Carly. It's just got, it's just got a, a very, very weird, dark feel to it. Um, and although it looks it looks almost childlike, it's actually quite a freaky and dark deck. Um, I'll show you what the back, I've done mine in black. That's what the back looks like. So it's a very simple backing. Um, but I love this deck. I actually use this quite a lot. It's called the Oracle of Shadow and Light. Okay, quite a, quite a big deck as well. Next up, I've got my Queen of the Moon Oracle. Now, I've included this in my dark deck because I really feel that this has got to do with the night, the moon, um, the mystery. I've done mine in a royal blue because it tends to match everything. That's what the back of the cards look like. And this is really cool because it just goes through all the different phases of the moon. 
that's pretty much what it does, okay? And then what it does is it gives you the waning crescent and it means surrender. Um, it will say egg moon, trust. So that's what it does. The, the images are really, really nice. You can even use this as an altar deck. So that's the Queen of the Moon Oracle. All right. Not, not a very difficult oracle to get, and also I don't think it's terribly pricey. Next up, I've got the Santa Morte Oracle. Now, I don't have the tarot deck to this, but I do have the oracle. And I'll tell you why. The oracle is actually really difficult to read. You have to know the, the, the book because it's literally just a number and a card. But what's cool about this deck is if you lay all the cards out, upside down, that's the back of the cards. So if you lay the cards down, up, uh, if you lay all the cards out upside down, you'll end up with a, <laughs> a really cool Ouija board. Yeah, a really cool Ouija board, okay? Um, the, as I said, the cards are difficult to read unless you read the, the book because there's just, there's nothing, it's just the cards. And some of them are like really obtuse, like that, you know, and that. Um, so yeah, these are not very easy to read, but I love these, I really do, I absolutely love them. Um, so that is the Santa Morte Oracle, Book of the Dead. If you do have the tarot, try and get this because it's just such a nice combination, you can combine the two. Right, now I have an even weirder deck. This is called the Angelarium Oracle of Emanations. I've done mine in black. That's the back of them. And this is directly related to Kabbalah. Okay, all the different Sephiroth and the different angels and all the different things that, that are related to Kabbalah. The, the drawing in this is just mind-bending. Like, seriously, go online and, and just have a look at the, the artwork that is on here. The, this, this video that I'm doing now doesn't do this any justice. Go online and see if you can find some big, big prints of, of these cards. Um, again, a very difficult deck to read with. You do need to know something about Kabbalah, the, the background of Kabbalah, or you need to really, really study the little guidebook that comes with this. It's actually quite a, a dense guidebook, so you can use that as a, as a guide as such. Okay, so this is the Angelarium Oracle of Emanations. Really cool deck. And then, believe it or not, my last Oracle deck that I have is my latest, latest purchase, and it's called the Mausolea Oracle of Souls. And it's very much the same as the Angelarium Oracle of Emanations. In fact, it's by the same people. That's the back. I've done mine in black. And you can see even the art style is very, um, very similar. You can see the drawings are very similar. The art is very similar. But this is much easier to read because it kind of gives you who it is, what he is, or, and, and then what the, the card means. Again, very dark and very... Um, very mysterious cards. This is definitely one that I would recommend for anyone who is into uh, who, who's into witchcraft, Wicca, um, any gothic people out there who would like to have a nice dark oracle deck. This is definitely the one to go for. That is called the Mausolea Oracle of Souls. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those of you who are non-binary and don't have any idea what you are, is my entire oracle collection. Wow.